it's really nice to have you with us today. And today we're going to discuss um, healthy fats. And so this um, presentation will cover fats roles in your health, choosing the healthiest types of fat, and then we're going to talk a little bit more about omega-3 fatty acids. You've probably heard about those, and so we'll talk about those in a little bit more detail. So, what comes to mind? Yeah. I take the amount of Pardon me? I take the amount of beans. Oh, good, good. That's great. Um, so, when you hear the word fat, what comes to mind? What are your reactions? What are your emotions when we say fat? All around your belly. Okay. Is it usually a good feeling? No. No. Usually it's kind of a negative feeling about oh, yeah. that when we talk about it. Because what do we relate it to? Not to the food we eat, do we? We relate it to all around our belly or elsewhere. So, you know, it is really important for us to have fat in our diet. So we'll talk a little bit about that. Okay, so the type of fat that is what matters. We have to have fat, and I'll tell you a little bit more about why we do in just a minute, but it's really important to our bodies to have some fat. What's most important is the type of fat that we eat and then how much of it, too. If you've been to one of my presentations before, you have heard me say, we talk about um, balanced variety and moderation. So once again, we're going to incorporate those thoughts into this presentation about fats. <clears throat> so what does fat provide? It provides calories, and then it provides satiety. So what does satiety mean? Yeah. Keeps you full. Keeps you full. So if you ever eat, let's say you eat some um, salad, but you don't put any salad dressing on it, and you don't put any like protein on it or anything else, it's just lettuce and tomatoes and things like that. Does it keep you full very long? Mm. It fills you up fast, doesn't it? Because it, there's a lot of bulk, but it doesn't stay with you. But if you put a fat, like a dressing on it, it stays with you a little bit longer. You feel fuller and more satisfied. That also, supports our body system. So it's really important to have fat in our diet. So the, 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 the idea is to choose healthful fats. And by choosing healthful fats, you will protect your heart. We all, uh, also, uh, all, often hear the term help heart healthy fats. Heart healthy fats means they're pre protective for your heart and that they don't damage your heart. Um, fats also provide antioxidants. So who was here at the antioxidant phytochemical talk? Okay, <laughs> so you remember what I said about antioxidants and phytochemicals or phytonutrients. We need those in our body to help us, uh, pr protect us from diseases. So healthy fats will do that as well. And they help support healthy neurotransmitters. Well, neurotransmitters are something in your brain that helps those brain waves connect and do what they're supposed to do. Very important as we age, because what do we hear about aging, the aging brain, you know? So we want to protect that. When a baby is born, they need fat to help their brain cells grow and mature. And, you know, that's why a baby has to have whole milk and things like that until they're two years old, so that they'll get enough fat for brain development. Well, it goes throughout our lifetime that we still have to have healthy fat for our brains to continue to do their work. So what happens to the aging brain? There's, um, there's white and gray matter volumes in our brain decline. The plaque can build up. What do we know about plaque? It's associated with Alzheimer's. and. When we talk about plaque, if you talk about plaque in your arteries or in your veins or on your teeth, it's not a happy thing, is it? It's, it's a bad thing. So um, we, we can keep the plaque from building up by choosing healthy fats. And that, like you said, that, that plaque contributes to Alzheimer's or other dementias. 
So we want to make sure that we maintain brain health and we'll do that with healthy fats. So omega-3 fatty acids are very beneficial. Um, people who consume more omega-3 fatty acids have better co cognitive function and a reduced risk for dementia. Some studies show that it's a 40 to 50% reduced risk of dementia when you have a diet rich in omega-3 fatty acids. Um, supplementing does show some inconsistent results. Some people who have supplemented with omega-3s show a, a real improvement in brain and cognitive function, and some of them don't experience very much change. So although it, it probably won't hurt, it may not help as much as we think it would. The idea is to get your omega-3s from your healthy food choices. <clears throat> so um, we, we think about, well, what is a healthy fat? How do I choose it? You know, a lot of foods provide a, a multiple of nutrients. We talk about foods that have carbohydrates, fat, and protein in them, and that's a good source of food because it's, it's very balanced, and it also has vitamins and minerals. Um, so that's sometimes why we want to take the food in instead of just relying on supplements. So that's why I, I always say, unless you don't have a very good diet, just eat a good diet and expect you to get enough nutrients of all kinds. So let's look at those healthy fats. This, I almost took a picture of Safeway when I went to buy some healthy fats because they have this, a big selection just like this picture shows us, but this is not at Safeway, at least not at our Safeway. Um, to choose the, the healthiest types of fats, tip number one is choose liquid oils instead of solid fats. Liquid oils are richer in um, monounsaturated fatty acids and lower in unhealthful saturated fatty acids. So the more unsaturated they are, the better they all are for us. Tip number two is, um, sorry, tip, we're still on tip number one. Olive oil, canola oil, safflower oil, and peanut oil are some of the best sources of healthful oils. Um, you can use, remember moderation is also the key, you can use one or two teaspoons at each meal and be just fine. So if you choose a heart healthy oil like that, you can incorporate it into like a salad dressing or you can use it to dip your bread in too instead of using butter, things like that. So also, some of these oils are better for cooking because they have a higher smoke point. So that means you can cook at higher temperatures with them. Oftentimes on the front of the bottle, the label will tell you good for high heats or on there someplace it'll tell you not to, to use at high heats. Um, so that's real important to look at that as well. A lot of these healthy fats like the peanut oil, I have up here walnut oil and avocado oil, they have a flavor, just like olive oil tastes different than just plain vegetable oil, they'll have a flavor. So experiment with it. I'm telling you it's not a really inexpensive experiment because they tend to be a little costly, but if you know, maybe you buy a bottle of a different uh, oil once a month and experiment with them and see what you like as far as they flavor. Uh -huh. We will get to coconut oil. Don't let me forget, but we will get there, okay? Thank you. So tip number two is to skip the solid fats. So what are solid fats? That means at room temperature, they are solid. And what that means is they have more of those saturated fatty acids. So that's what we don't want is the saturated fatty acids. So so those things that are at room temperature and still solid. So let's think about it. I'm going to mention, I'm going to mention coconut oil because it is solvent, but we'll, we'll get back to that a little bit more, okay? It is solid at room temperature. 
Um, butter remains pretty solid at room temperature, doesn't it? Plain old butter. If you leave cream cheese out at room temperature, it's pretty solid. What about, what did we use to make our pie crust with? Lard. Lard or Crisco. Lard or Crisco. And they are solid at room temperature. And then if you eat beef, beef or pork, and you have the fat, that's solid at room temperature. So any fat from any animal is, is um, saturated fat and solid at room temperature. So one of the things that we want to do is not do away with them completely, but just use them less and in moderation. So let's think about some substitutions. You can use liquid oils instead of butter or lard or shortening for cooking. We always used to cook, like if we were going to make fried chicken, what did we cook it in? Crisco or lard, yeah. If we were going to make, um, oh, let me think of something else. What did we do with our bacon grease? We didn't throw it away, did we? We kept that stuff because it tastes good and it's, it, but what does it do? It solidifies at, at room temperature, doesn't it? So, so not a healthy choice. So we can substitute the liquid oils. And, you know, we like that, that um, bacon grease because of all of the flavor that it has. Well, all fats impart flavor in some way. And we can get flavor out of the liquid oils. Like I said, the, the, you know, olive oil. Who loves olive oil? We all do. It's got that really nice fruity flavor, doesn't it? Another way we can substitute is by using mustard or hummus instead of cheese or cheese breads or, or cream cheese as a dip. You can, um, we can use mustard on sandwiches and things like that instead of mayonnaise. Another thing is to replace sour cream with non-flat plain Greek yogurt. Um, it makes a really good substitute. Used to when we had, we just had regular yogurt. It wasn't quite thick enough to really make a, a difference. But now with all of the Greek yogurts out there, we can really uh, make a good substitution. The third tip is to seek out monounsaturated fats. So, saturated fats and monounsaturated and polyunsaturated and unsaturated, all those words are just a, a way to describe chemistry. And so, monounsaturated fats are a good, one of the good healthy fats. And we get those from things like seeds and nuts and avocados. So, you can get it from sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, um, avocado. Um, all kinds of nuts, and do you, you always are hearing now heart, nuts are a heart healthy fat, and so they are, and that's because they have the monounsaturated fats. However, I have to warn you with the portions, you have to keep your serving small because even though they're heart healthy, they are calorically dense. So what does that mean? Calorically dense means for the portion size, they have a lot of calories. We'll talk a little bit more about this later, but when you think about fats versus protein or carbohydrate, proteins and carbohydrates have four calories per gram. Fats have nine calories per gram. So that's what calorically dense means, is they have a lot of calories for the portion size. So you want to aim for like an ounce of nuts, and that's a palm, the palm of your hand, and so that's a good portion size. A tablespoon and a half or two tablespoons of something like peanut butter is a good, is a good measure, and then about a fourth of an avocado. Some people say a, a, a sixth of an avocado, I think it depends on the size of avocado that, that you're looking at. Some people believe in eating, eating a, an avocado a day, and I'm not opposed to that because it is so heart healthy. If you can afford the calories, that's what you have to look at is, do I have these calories to spare, okay? 
The next tip is to seek out omega-3 fatty acids. So omega-3s come in um, foods like salmon and anchovies and herring and mackerel. Um, you, you can have fish like this two or three times a week. It's a really good idea. You also get some omega-3s from nuts. So those kinds of foods, um, seek those out. How many of you just can't do the two times a week on fish because you just don't like fish? Yeah, it's, it's a hard one. And so um, look for other sources of omega-3s and, and the oils and the nuts and things like that. But it is a good time, good, good idea to eat fish a couple of times a week if you can. Tip number five is to skip saturated fats. So what are the saturated fats? It's those things that are solid at room temperature. So eat fewer foods that, that contain those. So it's all of our favorite things, isn't it? <laughs> so that's cheese, pizza, uh, deli meats like salami because they put a lot of fat in those to prepare them. Uh, commercially baked goods, ice cream, those are the things with saturated fat. Um, a lot of those also have trans fats and so it's important to avoid trans fat as we see in tip number six. Trans fats can um, contribute to heart disease and cancer, so we should really avoid those as much as possible. And I think that one of my last classes, we talked a little bit about trans fats, and they are chemically altered fats. And so a lot of them are seen in, um, in processed foods. So once again, if you avoid those foods like cheese and pizza and things like that, you can avoid some of those trans fats as well. And as well as um, crackers and things like that, that you see in the, in the cookie aisle, always look at the label because it will say if there's trans fats in them. And so it's best to choose ones that don't have trans fats. And it just takes a little bit of label reading. So once again, those trans fats are found in vegetable shortening, some types of stick mar margarine, deep fried fast foods, commercially baked desserts and cookies and things like that. Once again, just read that label and make sure what you're getting. So let's talk a little bit more about the omega-3s. So omega-3 fatty acids are found in those cold water ocean fish, and they can be a really good thing for us. Um, omega-3 fatty acids are types of fat that help decrease the risk of cardiovascular disease. They help reduce internal inflammation. So that's important if you have type 2 diabetes or arthritis or some kinds of cancer. It, it also plays a key role in maintaining happy, healthy, active brain function. So that's why we want to, um, to focus on those healthy omega-3s. Too bad they just come mainly in fish, isn't it? <laughs> there, are three there are three primary forms of omega-3 fatty acids. DHA is called doxo Oenic acid, EPA is another acid, and AOA is another, alpha linoleic acid. And once again, seafood is the best source of both the EPA and the DHA, and they have the most impact on your health. Um, some plants from, uh, some kinds of foods from plants have the AOA, like nuts, so they aren't. Um, as effective, so the fish is really the best kind of omega-3 for that. So heart disease is the leading role, leading cause of death in the United States, and omega-3 fatty acids play an important role in protecting against peripheral artery disease and heart attack and atherosclerosis and stroke. So all of these 
things, all of these diseases are reasons that we should increase the, the omega-3s in our diet to help prevent against those. They're very protective. Once again, they reduce inflammation, and that is a key cause for cardiovascular disease. They decrease the risk of an abnormal heartbeat, which can lead to heart attack. And they improve the function of the blood vessels and reduce the plaque, lower blood pressure, and reduce the risk of stroke. So all good reasons to have those foods in our diet. Once again, mackerel, lake trout, herring, sardines, tuna, salmon, all are good sources of, especially the EPA and the DHA forms of omega-3s. Now there are some other seafoods that have a decent source of the EPA and DHA. They're not as rich as those other fish that we just talked about, and that's cod, tilapia, and shellfish. So you can, you can also do shrimp. Some people don't like, um, like fish, but they like the seafood, so shrimp and lobster and things like that. Not as, a, not as much, but a decent um, source. Dip to butter. Dip to butter. <laughs> well, maybe we learned to dip them in avocado oil. I don't know. <laughs> um, the American Heart Association recommends that we have two servings of cooked fish twice a week. So that's um, straight from the, uh, the Heart Association. Other sources of omega-3s are, um, and this is the ALA source of omega-3s, are ground black seeds and flaxseed oil. I didn't buy flaxseed oil today because it was, it's pretty pricey. But if, um, if you look on the baking aisle, there are flax seeds and they come ground and whole. And you can add those things to like your oatmeal or your cereal in the morning. Um, you can add them to smoothies, makes a good addition to smoothies. Um, so you might try experimenting with that. Uh, canola oil has, the, it has some omega-3s. Soybeans and soybean oil, pumpkin seeds, walnuts and walnut oil. So experiment with those to, if you're not a fish eater. Once again, it, it, they're not as good of sources, but they're, they're better than none. So um, I encourage you to do that. And so your body will just need a larger amount because we don't process them as well. Um, Let me just give you a little note about supplements. Um, supplements can be um, can be dangerous because high doses of omega-3 fatty acids by supplementation, um, especially in fish oil, can cause a risk of bleeding or hemorrhagic stroke. So I always recommend that you really talk about that with your physician before you use those oil sub, uh, fish oil supplements, just to make sure that your physician thinks that it's okay for you to do that. And once again, I always recommend that you get your nutrients from your food. And then mercury. Sometimes we worry about the mercury in seafood, don't we? We hear about that. So some types of seafood food can be high in mercury and other contaminants that can lead to health problems. So we, we want to make sure that we're paying attention to where the source of our fish comes from. And um, four of the most commonly eaten fish or shellfish that are low in mercury are shrimp, salmon, pollock, and cat feed, catfish. Some of the ones that tend to have the highest level of mercury are shark, swordfish, mackerel, and tilefish. So those are things that maybe you can just avoid eating those. But it looks like, you know, shrimp, salmon, pollock, those are some of our main fishes, so that looks like that they're healthy. So just keep that in mind, though, as far as the mercury and seafood. So let's, let's look back. Remember that it's really important that we have fat in our diet. 
for satiety, for brain function, and it's a really good source of calories if we happen to need calories. Um, your body will store excess fat, so it's important to keep in mind variety, moderation, how often, how much you eat of these foods, and then um, choose the healthiest types of fats. So once again, the oils that are <coughs> liquid at room temperature, and then um, avoid the, the ones that are solid at room temperature. And then we also like the avocados for fat and nuts for fat. And I see, I think around, you've got some nuts maybe on your table or over here. And so always enjoy those nuts. Remember moderation because fat has nine calories per gram instead of four. So I'm gonna get back to Margaret's um, question about what about coconut oil? Okay, so coconut oil is 90% saturated. However, um, it's grown in popularity over the last few years. A lot of people like it for some of the, the, the healthy reasons. There are some health benefits to, um, to using um, coconut oil, and one of those is it does tend to um, slow the progression of Alzheimer's disease, so that might be a reason to use it. Um, a lot of the manufacturers have, have started using coconut oil to replace other, coconut, uh, other oils. Um, there, there is a component in co of coconut oil that has been found to give good um, cholesterol, a, a little nudge. So good cholesterol, remember that's our HDLs. And so some, there's some evidence that it helps with that. Um, it, there may be some effect of, um, of it having um, a positive influence on insulin, but those studies were only got done with mice, so you have to keep that in mind, where were those, those um, studies done. It has an anti-stress and antioxidant properties, which could help with um, both your, your cognitive function and also with maybe depression and things like that. It's really good for skin. It's a really good moisturizer for your skin and for your health, hair. So it's been added to a lot of lotions and a lot of shampoos and conditioners and things like that because it really does have good properties for that. Um, some, there's some evidence that it might help liver disease. So, but once again, that was that comes from mice my, my study, so we have to keep that in mind. So there are some reasons to use coconut oil, but once again, remember that it is a saturated fat. It's not an unsaturated fat. And remember that even though it has all those good properties, it still has nine calories per gram. So keep that in mind. And I think that's the case with anything, is any fats. You have to keep in mind that they they have more calories, so portion control is really, really important. So I'm going to go over with you. I, you have some handouts that I gave you, and they're all just about, you know, they're, they have basic information on them. Um, the one that comes from the American Diet, Dietetic Association, mine's black and white, so yours looks like this. Um, Anyway, it's got some really good ideas and, and, um, and facts on it, so um, I encourage you to really look at that and read up about what saturated fats are and what unsaturated fats are. Um, the other, the other um, handouts that I gave you, um, one of them that was, maybe I didn't give you that one. I didn't give you that one. They give you some ideas on how to cut down on saturated fat, so really important information to read. The, remember to read those labels, really read the labels on things that you purchase at the store because 
if you attended legal reading last month, you'll remember that it's, it's a law that manufacturers put on the label certain things. And one of the things that they must put is the um, trans fat and the, how much of the fat is saturated and unsaturated. So they have to include those things on the label. So be sure that you're looking at that. Um, I, today I bought um, a pound of butter. This is just good old fashioned unsalted butter. Next to it was this. It calls it country crop plant butter made with almond oil. So it's not butter because it can't be butter unless it's made with dairy. So it's a spread and in little small writing it says, some place it says dairy free spread. So it's made of vegetable oil, mostly olive oil. It is set it is solid at room temperature. This has been sitting out for a while and it's still quite solid. Um, and the interesting thing is, even though it's from almond oil, it's one tablespoon is 100 calories. And one tablespoon of butter is 100 calories. So what do you think is the goal for them to make this butter, this bread? to have it look and act more like butter, right? Like the real thing. So uh, when you look at it, it has 11 grams of fat total, and so does the butter, the regular butter. And um, this has, the, the almond oil one has five grams, grams of saturated fat. The real butter has seven grams of saturated fat. Neither one have any trans fats, and so that's a good thing, isn't it? Um, and this one talks about polyunsaturated fats and monounsaturated fats, and regular butter doesn't. So what do you think? What do you think? What are your ideas when I, which would you choose? Butter. The butter? Yeah, I mean, it's okay to have real butter, isn't it? Yeah. And sometimes we'd rather have real butter because if you look at the ingredient list, the real butter has pasteurized cream from milk and natural flavoring. That's the ingredients. And this one has a blend of vegetable oils, water, salt, pea protein, sunflower lecithin, monoglycerides, citric acid, natural flavors, vitamin A, palmitate calcium disodium, uh, and beta carotene for color. So, you know, what do I say sometimes? If you can't pronounce it, don't keep it. So, so really, you know, that's, that's the thing with everything though. I, I always remind you that it's balanced variety and moderation. If you love butter, have butter. Just be cognizant about how much you have it and how often. What is something that you just can't eat without that flavor of butter? Corn on the cob. Corn on the cob. Yep. You have to have butter for corn on the cob and popcorn and things like that. But do we do that every single day? That's the idea. If you're making cookies, I don't expect you to make cookies that are heart healthy. Cookies are cookies, right? But we don't make them every day and we don't eat them every day. When you do make them, enjoy them. Day by day, every day, the idea is to choose the healthy fats, choose the liquid oils, choose um, nut butters. We didn't talk a lot about nut butters, but peanut butter, almond butter, all of those nut butters are so good for us because they're made out of those heart healthy fats. And we love those. They add flavor, they have some protein in them. So it's really good to have the nut butters. But remember the portion size. It's not a fourth of a cup for a sandwich, it's two tablespoons for a sandwich. So that's what we have to remember. And then when we do have something to celebrate, then that's when we have the real thing and just enjoy it in moderation. 
Um, do you have any questions, Margaret? Did I answer your questions about the coconut oil? Yeah, thank you. Now, it does have a distinct flavor, and sometimes mm -hmm. that's what we're going for when we choose a fat, isn't it? We want that certain flavor, and, and it does have, so, but. Uh, what about margarine? Isn't that neat? If it looks like it and tastes like it, then we're having plastic. Well, margarine is just like this. This could be margarine because it's, it, it's made out of the same, it's made the same way. Margarine is, it historically has been one of those things that's high in trans fats. They're getting away from that because we've learned about the heart health and they have such a negative <laughs> connotation. But um, the main thing to do is look at the label and see if they have trans fats in them. So margarine is mostly water with a lot of other stuff added to make it taste like butter, maybe, and give it some properties of um, butter. Um, but you can't, can you bake very well with margarine? No, because what happens when you, when you melt margarine in a skillet, what happens? It's water. It separates the water from the fat, and so it's, it's not very effective for frying or anything like that. It's just for a spread. As a spread, it's okay. So just look at the label about the trans fats and then just decide on your own if that's what you want to do. What other questions? Chinook. What about grapeseed oil? Grapeseed oil is a very heart healthy oil as well. It's one of those good oils. Yeah, um, I did, pardon me? You can get it faster? Yes. Yes. Yes, you can. You can get it at Dashes or Safeway. It is pricey. And frankly, that's why I didn't buy grapeseed oil today because a little bottle was like $12 or something like that. It is, if I remember right, grapeseed oil is real good for frying because it has a real high, high smoke temperature. So you can fry at a high temperature with it. Um, so that's. That's one reason for it. I, I don't know about the flavor of grapeseed oil. I haven't I haven't checked it out. Um, I know that the, I like the almond oil and uh, walnut oil are both really flavorful. Mm -hmm. So walnut or almond oil is also good for your skin. Um, really healthy skin ointment. That's like fine juice, but because you're cooking it in with enhanced peanut oil. Yeah. Yeah, and that's, that's a good point. Fat adds flavor. That's, that's why we get in trouble, is because fat adds flavor. That's, um, it makes everything taste better when, it, when it's cooked with fat, and so that's why we love it so much and we get in trouble and eat too much, isn't it? Peanut oil is a perfect example, very flavorful when you fry things in it, like fondue or peanut oil. A lot of places fry french fries in peanut oil. So it really, between the oil and the salt, you know, it, it's really yummy, isn't it? <laughs> um, cream cheese, I brought this too to just, to just talk a little bit about. Um, once again, it's two tablespoons is a serving. So you get a little bit more, but it's 100 calories. Um, 80 of those calories are fat, nine, uh, it has 9 grams of fat, 6 of which are saturated, and it has 0 trans fats. So as a spread, you get a little bit more for the same calories. So it, it, if you like cream cheese, that's another good idea for a spread. Um, it does have a little bit of protein, a tiny bit of protein, and a little bit of carbohydrates in it. Some of the things to use for spreads, we talked about hummus in the presentation. Do you all know what hummus is? Chickpeas. It's chickpeas, and it's, it's blended up with some olive oil and garlic and different flavorings, and it makes a good spread for sandwiches because it has a lot of flavor. It's got that creamy texture, and it has some fat in it from the olive oil, but it also has a lot of fiber and protein from the chickpeas. So hummus is one of those things to use on, as a spread. 
as is avocado, because you could mash up an avocado, really mash it up, and then season it with a little salt and pepper, and it's a good spread for a wrap or for your sandwich. So another another heart healthy spread idea.